Welcome back to the North American LCS. Yes, this is your captain speaking. It is time for our next match of the day. Counter Logic Gaming versus Echo Fox. Your laughing made me lose my... Anyway, <laughs> let's zero in on the first starting professionals, we swear. Day. Professionals on the stage as well. Counter Logic Gaming on the blue side. Darshan, Mr. President, in the top lane. Rain over in the jungle. Who he admits. Stixay and Biofrost at bot lane to support. With their head coach, Zix, and strategic coach, Goldman, joining them on stage. Because that makes me the first mate. So challenging them on the red side is Perfect. Echo Fox in the top lane. Hooney in the jungle. Dardock, mid laner, Demonte, bot and support gonna be lost and smoothie with coach Thinkard. All right, so this is gonna be a very fun game. The perceptions around Echo Fox's new additions are that this could be the best look for the team that already looks good and has room to grow. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of positive takeaways from last weekend. Lost and Smoothie looked like they fit very well together, and Lost individually, I think, had some very strong performances. He was playing aggressively, confidently, and the team looked strong. Absolutely agree. They could look even better if more time suits them. Now we're going to see how CLG can keep up with them, though, this week. Echo Fox uh, as their opponent. CLG looking to break a four-game losing streak. Yeah, and at the end of week four, everything kind of felt, hey, CLG has it figured out. It's working very well. They're picking up a lot of wins. The team seemed very happy. Uh, and now, again, it, it feels somewhat disjointed, right? It's kind of back to some of the problems that they have had in spring, where, you know, at the end of spring, they swapped to Biofrost shot calling. That was supposed to be a solution. Seemed like it was for the first little bit of, of the summer split. But now, hey, they don't seem to really have the answers. They are on a pretty heavy slide. They've yeah. been trying some different things. Nothing is really working. And I feel like this team really desperately needs to get some wins to right. build that confidence back up. Right, in the back half of the split, CLG are losing to teams that they beat the first time around. The last two games against Optic and 100 Thieves were teams they beat in the first round of They are losing the rematches. They're losing games that they were winning before. Something is definitely going wrong for them. They were in first place at the end of week four. That's no longer anywhere near where they are right now. In fact, with some of the earlier wins, they're actually out of playoff position. They have to keep up with Cloud9 and the other teams above them. So CLG, they grabbed themselves there. Varus really, really quick. Answered immediately by Zaya Rakan now for Echo Fox. Zyra Khan, strong duo here for Lost and Smoothie. This is the first non varus game we have seen in the LCS from Lost, though. It is worth mentioning that the coach, uh, Think Hard, said last week, hey, we're going to pick Varus for Lost because he is a bit nervous, and that is something that is going to give him confidence. It's his biggest comfort pick. So CLG actually takes it away from him this time around, and I think it's a strong pick individually, and made even better by the fact that you're maybe putting this guy off of his comfort. And CLG also taking some of Dardock's best champions off him as well. The Graves ban, the early pickup on the Kindred, hoping to push him down a little bit. His Gragas, though, still a champion. We've seen him play before. It can still be a top laner, of course. Gragas can go in a lot of different places, but uh, my money's still on it being Dardock's jump Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. And I think that it fits Dardock's playstyle more since it has kind of gotten better as an AP champion because you're getting damage reduction on your W from the AP that you're building. You can build more aggressively as a result at times, and I think it can be pretty powerful. And people always talk about displacement as one of the answers to Kindred because Kindred drops the ultimate. Gragas can ult you out. Lee Sin can kick you out. Janna can push you out. Those are champions that are considered very often strong against it. Definitely agree. So we'll see if this can knock down Kindred of Peg. Definitely has been a very strong champion so far in the NAL. CS so yes, will be Rainover's first, no, sorry, second Kindred game of the split. Of course, only really joined the professional metagame recently. And now time for the second round of picks and bans. And look at these interesting ones. Jace and Camille off the table. Not common champions in top lane in North America, but these ones getting removed here. We'll see as Dr. Muna goes away. One final top lane ban for CLG, and it's Echo Fox's turn to pick right after. Yeah, Huni is certainly a guy that, that would be a Jace player if the matchup makes sense. And I'm trying to think, what is it that Darshan wants to play that he's worried about a Jace into? Yasuo even getting banned out here. I mean, Yasuo, I think, makes some sense when you're looking at Rakan with a knockup, Gragas with a knockup, it could be going mid lane, could be going top lane. So that is maybe a bit of a read based on the picks that they have actually gone for. Maybe they're looking at Nar for something. There's the blind okay. rumble here. Um, Yasuo normally known as a counter to Nar, thinking of like safe top laners that Darshan could play. There's Stixay's perennial war recover, of course. But yeah, Rumble, going to be a fun one. I think Rumble can still flex top and mid. We saw, for example, Echo Fox do that themselves back at Rift Rivals. Not too much success, but hey, it's an option. Either way, I still like Rumble as adding magic damage to the team. We'll see what comes out alongside that, though, as CLG must lock in a champion in three seconds. Yeah, no wins for Rumble yet in LCS Summer in the NALCS, but it is played around the world and, uh, you know, is played much more heavily in some of the other regions. It's played in the LCK and you know, elsewhere in the world. 
can be very, very strong in a lot of matchups. I think certainly should have the advantage here against the Cho'Gath, but that being said, uh, Cho'Gath can get to a certain point where you have so much MR that in combination with your passive, you can start to really just kind of ignore the rumble and then uh, it can start to look bad for them. You just walk at the guy and he has to either flame spitter you or run away. Exactly. Certainly, Rumble can run away really easily. You land a couple of harpoons, you outrun the guy. It shouldn't be that big of an issue. But either way, lineup is locked in for CLG with a Rise complementing it. Yeah, and Shogath is one of the tanks that can actually kind of trade back more effectively against the Rumble because Rumble comes up the flame spitter. You can actually be hitting him with kind of AoE on your Vorpal spikes and, you know, getting grass autos off and these sorts of things. So I uh, certainly can look to trade back. We'll see how Huni can play this out. This is. I would say a much more squishy composition, a harder composition to kind of run here for Echo Fox, but they are always more on the side of run higher damage compositions that are harder to execute on, but have very high potential uh, if you can pull them off. That is definitely the Echo Fox style of play. Most played by a role, Gangplank and Graves, for example. I'll kind of tell you a lot about this one, but a one and one record for the new Echo Fox lineup, but a good look for them overall. Demonte back on Syndra, his most played here as well, and it is Jungle Gragas. So, Echo Fox playing, as you mentioned, an aggressive lineup, a couple, uh, you know, a little bit less tank stats, but a lot of hard engage, a lot of damage output there. Meanwhile, CLG, a Cho'Gath and a Shen to keep their back line alive. Double Marksman and a rise for damage output. Pretty well rounded here. I think the Shen is pretty cool here from CLG. You know, it seems like a nod to how Echo Fox wants to play. Echo Fox loves to pick fights around the map, loves to try to go for, you know, aggressive dives and these sorts of things. And Shen can be a strong answer to that. That being said, the, the kind of weakness that you leave open is, hey, you don't have a Tom Kench. When you think about some of the games that have been played today, Tom Kench standing behind a Varus, Tom Kench standing behind their Marksman and keeping them exceptionally safe. Uh, this is going to be a Varus without that sort of peel, without that sort of kind of safety net uh, that they normally have. So Rakan can be incredibly powerful on the engages there. Gragas can have incredibly powerful engages. And if you catch that Varus, he may just die instantly. Yeah, you got to watch out for that one. So burst damage going to be the name of the game for the Echo Fox side. CLG, a much more standard composition. Rise in and of himself, not all that common anymore in North America and in pro play. Still is seen some, don't get me wrong, but certainly not that S tier we had seen before from him. And we are on to Summoner's Rift here for this battle. CLG just barely on the outside of playoff position. Echo Fox just about a game and a half behind first place. And they can keep up with Team Liquid. They can tie 100 Thieves with a win right here. And it is a, another champion that does have that semi-global presence, kind of answer fights around the map here from Echo Fox if they want to go for those early skirmishes. Some interesting options here as far as the, the masteries go. You know, double cleanse for Smoothie and Demonte. And Smoothie has actually gone airy here uh, on the Rakan, and I think that is simply because he's up against a Shen, someone who should have less laning presence. And, you know, grabbing that extra little bit of damage, you have the Spell Thieves, you have the airy. This is a much more aggressive setup here from Smoothie that he's going to be looking to kind of have more lane dominance with. You know, this is not coin um, and guardian. This is not coin and and kind of more of a, a sit back style build. Minions have spawned. Okay, so what do we got here for ourselves? Right now, nothing too aggressive in the level one. No face checks and invades after Shen taunts or anything. Worth also pointing out, 6A is going uh, corrupting here as well, right? So this is the same thing that Cody Sun did. Uh, he is Comet, he's gonna be going lethality. And I think this is really just saying, hey, I don't actually need the Doran's item or, or to go for that. Having the extra mana is actually more effective and allows you to perhaps skip that early tier once again. So uh, 6A making this adaptation and that kind of tells me that CLG and 100 Thieves are likely scrimming or that this is you know kind of popping up in, in their circles as it's it's really the first time I've been seeing it in pro play this week. Yeah. It's definitely a very poke heavy build of course you're seeing with the Comet as well, right? You land the E, Crafting Potion will add seven and a half damage, Comet will add another 20, 40, something like that. And you try to whittle people down that way, but of course, Shen not the biggest as far as follow-up poke. He's going to be there for the all-ins. We'll see what this matchup looks like over time. Right now, a pretty equal trade of farm. These waves are actually a bit favored for CLG pushing. Uh, so this actually might be CLG getting two first. And uh, you very rarely lose the push on Zyra Rakan, but that mm -hmm. seems to be the case here. Yeah, it does look like it. The Relic Shield charge is going to be helping with that. And you know, looking much further ahead in the game, when you think about poke, it should be fairly effective. He's Rainer flashed flashing. over the play. He's got a teammate coming down. Shogath wants to stop him up here. Will this be enough? He's got a slow. He's going to try to block the body slam. There's a flash to get away. But one more hit will do him. Dardock oh. getting over the wall, and he actually does survive it. Now so with the Huni, flash though. Flash and yeah, Huni level one, running away from the wave. Very low on health. No dive quite to be had. 
but the flash to push them both out of lane. Yeah, they can actually push in this wave. Rainover can go grab the scuttle. Huni's gonna have to go to back to base and use his TP also. So super aggressive play here from CLG, but it does reward them with a scuttle, a flash, a TP. We'll have to see if uh, Darshan can stay safe though, because yes, he is up a TP, but he is down a flash and Darda could come for a return gank. So already TP burned, yes, and only that refillable potion. Now looking at the mid lane, Demonte very pushed up. Fire Fire's actually a little bit around, but Darda's right behind him, so there's a quick stun coming in. They're gonna kind of pill down to this, so looking for the damage. That's a flash force, but now the flash taunt, the cleanse, but the damage is still gonna be there. First blood of the mid lane. Who he grabs 400 gold. That was sick from CLG. Such a nice collapse. The Shen comes up. <laughs> the rain over comes down on this Kindred, and there was no way out really for Demonte. It felt like he responded fairly well there. They just got caught completely off guard by that three-man collapse and no hesitation from Biofrost following Demonte over that wall. Well, Darda getting his third camp. Watch this fight in the mid lane yet again as he sees Biofrost. They actually know he's there. Yeah, but I mean, they're thinking, okay, great. We win this 2v2, and then all of a sudden, Rainover is here also. He is level three. Flash over the wall straight onto Demonte, yeah. and he is just going to get run down. CLG playing exceptionally aggressive and using all their flashes offensively getting a kill, getting some pressure up on the top side, but this has been CLG's strength if there has been one. You know, it has been the early game. They had been non-stop getting first bloods, really getting advantages there. It's the mid and the late game where they have struggled in. The right flash the forward, and Huni gets... <laughs> well, yeah, uh, Wolves will get you sometimes. Nicely done. Huni all the way into the wolf camp gets that counter jungle kill. Yeah, great job there from Huni. You know, kind of suspecting that Rainover could be on those Wolves, knowing he hadn't gone back yet. He would be very low, finds him, gets a kill, gets the blue buff, and gonna be feeling pretty nice about that early roam. So again, it's cracking what CLG does from here. Their early game planning, their early game plays are almost always excellent. They have some of the best kind of first 10 minutes, I would say, in the entire league. Oh, absolutely. And now a fight for the bottom side, but a nice dodge zone comes out from Battle Frost. Prevents most of that trade from going well, but still a health leap to Echo Fox duo. And uh, of course, the, the new look for their duo lane. This is their third game together on stage. They've played together about 12 days now, and a solid early landing no phase. Now, Huni's got to be careful. No flash for him. Now, neither for Darduck nor Demonte, but this could be enough damage anyway. The slows are in. He's got a quick shield. Going to run away with the uh, phase rush as well and gets away from the skill shots. Nicely played Huhi putting his kit to work and gets out. Smoothies here, though. They have to be careful. Smoothie has flash. He's going to flash in. Debbie's going to land. They could knock down Rainover, and in fact, they will do so. But a root puts him in turret range. Good shields, though, and out goes Dardock. Rainover, a great early start, but then two back-to-back -back deaths here. Costing him quite a bit, and now it's Huni going aggressive onto Darshan. Thrill can pierce the heavens and do a lot of damage to a Void Monster. Greg is hitting towards the top side as well. Might look like a tower dive soon enough for Cho'Gath. Who he waiting behind the wings. And now Dardok through a ward coming here as well. Does who he stand his ground 1v2? Yeah, he really doesn't want to give up this wave. It's a, it's a lot of gold to be had there, especially with the cannon. Darshan now, though, has to back off. He's not six. He has no TP. When he is, uh, he's going to have to give up this wave. Does he blindly ult the brush? Does he make that read? Probably not. Darshan stopped recall, and Random's coming over. But this is six and five versus five and four. Huge level lead for Echo Fox with yeah. everything else available. Who he was missing, though, you can see the question mark pings there from Dumonte in the mid lane. So I think that prompts Echo Fox to back up. Uh, they know that they can win the 2v2. They do not want that 3v2. And Shen up here up on the top side to uh, could create some problems. I don't know if they, they realize that Biofrost is going to be here. And smite it up. Picked up, I think, there by Dardock, but now tied it up in a 1v3. This could be really bad for him. No way out. Rainover gets the kill. And it'll leave a mark as a result as well. Nicely done on the river. Yeah, Huhi walks over very low. Huni has his ult. He's going for it. Going to land some damage on Huhi. Damage on the Rainover as well. Level 4 on Kindred could be chased down. But Biofrost is here right again. The taunt is in. The kill comes through. Rainover grabs another. Biofrost is just everywhere this game. 3 KP on a support Shen pre-level 6. And none of them were in his lane. Biofrost having a monster early performance in this game. And Huni getting too aggressive. He has been getting punished for this so heavily recently. I'm not expecting the extra man to be there. He loses his life. Kind of giving up some of that advantage. Nobody expects River Shen. It's been around <laughs> for years, but beautiful stuff. And the fact that Stixay is keeping up in farm in a basically oh one God, two, the gonna get him. Him. He might die to the turret, but he cleansed the ignite. He had cleansed already, so stays alive through the dot. 
but this farm comes through and honestly just impressed the CLG duo. Yeah. Six is surviving 1v2 and Bowser's making the big plays. Huge stuff. And Six is up 5 CS. You would not expect that when Shen has made three roams away from that lane. And you're laning against Zaya Rakan, one of the strongest early game lanering duos in the game. So very impressive stuff from them. Dardock is 6, though, has Flash. Demonte is 6 as well. They could look for a play. Oh, it's going to land. He doesn't even oh, flash the max range and lost. Oh, that is rough. That was completely flashable. Gives the kill away. Yeah, he's going to want that one back. We'll see if Echo Fox can find something here in the mid lane, though. Three men mid. Dardock has Flash, has Body Slam. They're going to go. He has enough mana to fight. A shield available as well. Puts in some work. But that is first turret going down. Echo Fox grabs that one. 325 apiece as they collect the scraps down here. Yeah, nicely done by them. Just step forward. If he, who he tries to defend, they can kill him. If he does not, he loses that turret. So good moves from the Echo Fox squad there. But at the same time, yeah, CLG's bottom lane certainly winning out very heavily. Not only now have they gotten that kill and the, the CS lead in the bottom lane, Bifrost has been everywhere and lost certainly a pretty big mistake not being able to flash that max range bear assault. Oh, rough stuff. 500 gold deficit now. Echo Fox hoping to come back from some scary stuff. Even the first turret gold has not made it for the fact that CLG are out farming in several places and up kills as well. Uh, Ward traded back and forth. Mount Drake on the table. Not the most important right now, but might be worth grabbing overall. Quick smite. Draw that grab Scud on the bottom side. And look back in the two-on-two two right now, though. Better items for Stixe. Fire Frost with similar boat. Already has actually... I love this actually. Cooldown boots on the Shen means more frequent flashes to go for hard engages. Yeah, and you're going to be able to get 10% CDR from your, your Sight Zone item as well. Uh, and it's not just about the flash. It's about actually having cooldowns for your ultimate. When you can get mm. to a fast 30-40% CDR on a support Shen, this is something that uh, you can beat everywhere on the map. When you have uh, cooldown boots, when you build your Sight Stone, then you can grab something like a Knight's Vow for that Kindle Gem. You can reach very high levels of CDR and get out on the map and be very, very effective as a roaming threat. It's really a powerful play style, but it's one that people often only go for from ahead because you are squishier, obviously, going for you know, kind of more of an investment in that CDR as opposed to more tank stats. Right now, looking to be that squishy Shen to make the big plays. He's got a teammate behind him as well, so Rainover. Going through Fog. Stixx the only one showing himself on the map, but look how far back Echo Fox are playing. They are not even willing to auto-attack the minion wave outside of max range. That one melee cheats up and takes a single feather. And a second as he gets the last hit, but look how far back, how afraid they are. No gank to be had, with, not with them playing like this. Yeah, and rightfully so. You can see Demonte doesn't know where Rise is. They don't know where Kindred is. For all they know, there are four members down here, right? And uh, the play is not going to work out, so... Good instincts there from the Echo Fox bottom lane, trying to track where the members could be. But Rainover's just coming back again. They say, well, didn't work the first time, but there's no ward in the forward brush, so yep. maybe you just walk up and try it once more. Demonte is moving down, though, and now they have spotted Rainover. They could try to start with the dragon, but would be risky. Smoothie has the full kit available. Nice poke there. Lost losing about a quarter of his health. Able to wave through those safely down, or uh, last hit, I should say, safely under the turret. And well, that tension amounts to basically nothing here as everything backs off. Demonte just clearing mid. This time, no turret uh, opposing him. While they go, Ward's killed, and Dardock gets rid of some more of this vision. I'm pretty interested to see where Huni is actually going to take his build. You know, fairly defensive early buys with the early mark treads. Uh, you can see he's kind of concerned about that, but the Phoenix Codex, I, I would have expected him to maybe go for something. You, know, you do see some sort about Rumble, you do see Leandry's rush against tanky champions and these sorts of things, um, but maybe he just wants to go for a straight up early Zonius. Yeah, wait to see what it actually is. I'm trying to think of like the good Phoenix Codex. Like, there's a lot of options out there. I mean, there. it can be Banshees, it can yeah. be it can be uh, Zonias and these sort of things. But I don't yeah. think Banshees super makes sense. Like Zonias yeah. is the one that makes the most sense if you're trying to make plays and be able to kind of be proactive on this Rumble when you don't have a lot of true frontline. Yep. Uh, so we'll see if he decides to go that route. We'll wait to see. Right now, we're gonna look at the rest of this map. As Mountain Drake was picked up by Echo Fox pretty cleanly, half the CLG bot lane recalled, and he said, you know, what? yeah, we can just walk in here and. Forgot about that. BF Sword comes in the inventory for loss, so he's keeping up reasonably well. Gold-wise, he is down 500 under Stick Say. That is uh, not meaningless at all. Yomo's Ghost Blade now done for this Varus as well is a uh, pretty big deal, honestly. So first power spike in. Cho'Gath not far from Abyssal Mask. And the tier, of course, still stacking up for who he's rise. I think CLG right now in the driver's seat, but 
Again, only that 500 gold difference. You can localize that to the bot lane if you want. Enchantment's done for both Jungus as well here. Rain over with the Warrior, Dardock with his Runic Echoes. And it has been their strength, right? The early game has been their strength. We need to see CLG be effective in the later stages of the game, in the mid stages of the game. And that is where they have really been struggling. That is where they have lost the majority of their last four games on that lost streak. A lot of time here. Now, there's only one camp up. It's the yeah. Gromp. So it's not like Rainer was missing that much on the map by staying here. But really, I think he's, to be the play. he's really maybe expecting an engage onto this Varus. Again, remember, there's no Tom Kench to defend the Varus. You're looking at Gragas and Rakan. Seems like, hey, maybe they want to engage onto our Varus. Maybe they want to go for it. And then if the Kindred is there, you can turn that around. So it may just be that sort of uh, idea and less about the proactive plays. Uh, because otherwise, I think you'd want to be playing more around the rise. Find the thought. They find some damage up in the air. Goes Lost flashing away and has the Blade Collar as well. If he needs it, finds the root. Out they go. One flash down, one flash used by CLG. Yep, they trade out the summoners from the support. And as you pointed out, Lucidity Boots are already there. So that is going to be a bit of a shorter cooldown as a result. And uh, they can look to maybe pressure in a bit more now. That loss is somewhat vulnerable. But Echo Fox here in the mid lane. Flash ultimate available for Dardoch. Has to flash early because that body was going to land. I like that he actually went for that one early. Mm. Could have been a comboed kill. So out goes Huhi, getting pressure though heavily in this mid lane. Keeping up in farm has some kills but losing lane pressure. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of that is as a result of Dardoch non-stop being there. He has gotten some help from his Shen, but still Dardoch has been pressuring heavily. And I think that is the smart flash, because if you try to wait, uh, then it can just be flashed on top of you, and there's no real way to react. You basically have to flash as soon as you see that Gragas, expecting the body slam flash. He does so, but that does set him up for a very easy repeat gank. Now knowing who he has no flash, Dardoch has his own. You want to see Echo Fox execute on that, because Cinder with ult and flash, Gragas with ult and flash, which yeah. is a flashless ride, should be a guaranteed kill. Echo Fox have a lot of playmaking on this roster. We talked about it in champs like a squishier team, especially with the Runic Echoes, Gragas. Here, still don't take items on Smoothie either, for example, but looking for an aggressive play, looking yeah. for some potential dives. You actually saw, able to walk in, grab the blue buff. They were able to threaten Darshan for a second off his turret as well, as who he is stuck under his turret half the time on Rise. I've been seeing a, a fair bit of kind of tanky AP builds, more like old school Elise builds on, on Gragas yeah, these yeah. days also. You know, you go Runic Echoes, but then into even things like Zonias and whatnot. Because even in the tank uh, Gragas days, most people went Runic for the early clear. And yep. it's going to be invading here. Battling for buff. Blue, smited away. And now a taunt right in the front line. They can knock him down. Indeed, they will. Dardock, no stats there. And Ult for Rainer stay alive a little bit longer. Out goes the bottom no lane. And lost. Got some damage on the loss. Can they burn him down? Rumble equalizer does almost nothing. But Rainer will still drop things to a flash. A trade of kills so far, one for one, but a big stun comes across with one now for Echo Fox. And another couple, two traded back now on CLG. Huhi versus Demonte. Looking for the next little bit of play, but running out of health. Darshan, can he find the Q over the wall? Not just yet. Overall, three kills for CLG and only two for Echo Fox. Yeah, close fight there. A couple kills going the way of Huhi now. He is 3-0-3 three, and three on this rise, getting fairly strong. Here is the initial fight once more. Dardock looking, uh, sees Huhi coming over the wall, takes so much damage in the initial combo and just tries to retreat with the ultimate, but he gets taunted. The ultimate does nothing, goes down very quickly. Rain over having that Kindred ult and Trek 60 on the bottom here. You're not able to actually finish off loss, but a really nice stopwatch. Actually, stopwatch is the full ultimate from Syndra. So that was well done, but then flashing up straight into Huni, Demonte predicting that flash, catches him with the scatter of the week and is able to at least finish off that AD carry. Played as well as he could, but yeah. flanked by a Cinder. Good luck being a marksman, or really almost anyone in that kind of situation. Three kill Huni, now over towards his uh, typical Leandri's push, which uh, you tend to see a lot on this champion. And that pushing down to the bottom side. 20 farm lead right now, though, over Darshan. Has got a bit of lane pressure, and we will still wait to see how that matchup can yeah. unfold over the game. But again, uh, tank versus high damage. It makes me again wonder why the Codex, right? The Codex seems pretty I think random. It's CDR. If you are going for that. Yeah, maybe just that 10% CDR he's valuing very highly here. Um, and that is certainly defensible, but you know, getting to Lee injuries, getting things like Morellos against Shogath, if you're trying to pressure in that matchup, are very, very important. Sure. Um, but either way, it's going to be useful later on if he decides to you know, convert that into a Zonius, which we are expecting. Yeah. And we're seeing a lot of magic just come out pretty early from Counter Logic Gaming. You've got the Merc Treads early completed for Huhi, uh, Hex Drinker early for Rainover, and of course Darshan Abyssal Mask is no surprise yeah. at all. Now we can go over towards first. Armor Build, so. Yeah, even though you're right, Morellos can feel good to knock down some of the healing reduction. Flat pen is not, I think, a very good stat. Looking at the itemization build for seals, if they're building MR, you want void staff instead of flat pen, and so uh, abyssal mask, kind of a, a multiplier that's not straight flat pen, I think a pretty good option as well.
Yeah, maybe just going for that Banshees now. You can see him picking up another Blasting Wand. Has the Lee injuries completed, so uh, may just be skipping that altogether, or perhaps we're going to complete that later on. Either way, very close game on our hands. A couple hundred gold separating the two teams at about 18 minutes in, and you know, CLG has held fairly even. I do give them the advantage in the later stages if it comes to a straight-up 5v5, but there's so much playmaking potential on Echo Fox that can kind of throw a wrench in the gears there. Smoothie and Dardock in particular are two that you were really looking for. That's uh, kind of messed up. Ooh, nice little bit of damage there. Equalizer on top. That could still be Battlefrost dropping. He'll revive onto some flames. Almost get burned down, and ult comes through. Huni somehow grabbing the kill credit, though. Fourth in the game now for him. Echo Fox just explosive. Find the kill on Biofrost, pushing top lane outer. Yeah, there is some of that playmaking. They find Biofrost, they do get that kill. Zardox still has his flash and ultimate. They could look for a follow-up kill here on a 6A, but they will for now at least knock down one turret. Could go to Rift, could continue kind of pressuring out on the map, but they are a man up. Biofrost is going to be rezzing soon, though, would have Sand United. Ooh, Ryze will go for the flank. They're going to try it for the big play as Counter Logic Gaming is slow into Smoothie. Now the turn towards Lost. Put the board down, has nowhere to go. Rooted in place. The first is their kill for Rain over. And a nice teleport there from Huhi. Yeah, that was really well done there from Huhi. That rank 2 Rise alt. They could now be the ones to actually go for the Rift Herald, and they seem to be pinging over towards it. Darshan and Rain over looking to start that up. It would be nice to grab another stack here uh, for Darshan as well. Try to continue his scaling up towards the late game. Sitting on five stacks right now. All of those are from minions. Smack in the Rift Herald right now, and well, Echo Fox gets to do much to stop this one. Gardak himself is kind of recalling, so no smite around. This is going to be a formality, despite the fact that it's on vision. A chomp for Darshan, and they're going to give Biofrost? No, who's, someone's got to pick this up. All right, Reno will be the one to pull the trigger to summon Rift Herald in a couple of minutes. It's a little politeness battle. You take it. No, you take it. After you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's, yeah, jungles are the ones that are most <laughs> likely to go around the map and, and be in the opposite yeah. position, so that is why most people do it that way. Now, Cloud Drake, pretty easily picked up. It looks like Echo Fox able to at least stack Drakes, even if they are uh, losing some parts of the map pressure. But you look at this game, they're up three turrets, they'll be up to zero on Drakes, and they are up gold as a team. It is CLG who has won more fights, have gotten more kills, but not much else. Yeah, and, and if CLG can win a big fight, then there's a lot more standing gold, right? That's kind of the, the glass half full way of looking at it. Uh, Echo Fox, you know, their gold really is in those three turrets, right? And, and if CLG takes a big fight win, they have the Rift Herald that could knock down a couple turrets and really start to kind of open up an advantage for themselves. But that is a step that they have to obviously complete, and that is easier said than done. You can see 6-8 on two items now, has the Dust Blade, has the yeah. Ghost Blade, a lot of lethality here. Uh, in his kit, and you can see, you know, there's no armor at all purchased by Namonte yet. No armor on Lost. You know, there's no armor on Huni. Uh, really, like, there's a lot of squishy targets that he can look for. Yep. And no hard tanks, regardless. Even if it's, you know, moving towards these standards, sort of bring Echoes into tank build for this Gragas. These people can be knocked down. So this is the power spike for Sticks. Say this is kind of the time for CLG to look alive, find the fight, and start knocking down these turrets as their outer shell is already gone. And Echo Fox are trying to wrest control of the map. You can see them getting rid of some of the wards in the river. Yeah. And though it's probably too early to look at Baron as a very serious contention, you still want to play around that vision. Yeah, you have to at least kind of give the respect that it could be threatened, especially if you're a CLG. There's so much damage on Echo Fox's team, and they have a Mountain Dragon. You can burn that down quickly, even if it is this early. So you have to at least be aware of that opportunity. Who he on the side here could look for Lost. And despite the fact that there is Smoothie in tow as well, you have to always count in the fact that Biofrost can join with the Stand United, you can turn that 1v2 into a 2v2 and really kind of swing the odds in your favor. Right now, we're going through some wards. He doesn't know that the bot lane's right ahead of him, but safe enough with Biofrost next to him. Still trading back and forth for wave control. A 1,000 gold difference with Echo Fox ahead ever so slightly. Plus the crowd drake for movement, the mountain drake for big plays. Good flash, good star shot, out for explosive cast. Could have been a kill in the Cho'Gath, but he gets to... Gets himself to safety. Again, playing for vision. It's CLG who owns the river right now around Baron. Drake is four minutes away, so not much else to play for. Who he getting some alone time top side, though? He's got 700 TP. Demonte with cleanse can't match as easily. And CLG on the board with turrets. And you can see who he completed that early void stop. You know, as you were talking about, going to be very effective against all this MR that has been purchased. The Hex Shrinker, obviously the Abyssal, 
uh, has been bought up by Darshan, and he has another Negatron on top of that. So going to be very tanky boy himself. Landry's plus Void Staff going to be very, very strong in that 1v1 against Darshan. Uh, and in general, in the team fighting, as there is so much MR already being bought. Obviously, nothing yet on Biofrost or 6-8, but the rest of the squad uh, do have a decent chunk of MR. Clearing forces, clearing waves, back and forth they go. It has been a bit of a lull in this mid game. I think a lot of it is, I don't think Echo Fox are ahead enough to play for Baron reliably. I think with how much poke CLG potentially have, even if just Nixay is the hard poke champion, yeah. is just threatening enough. And also keep in mind this side lane right here, this Darshan versus Huni matchup. Though Darshan is down a level, there is still that threat of Shen showing up out of nowhere, the global ulti, Huhi. Also, conveniently waiting in a brush right here. Yep. CLG playing pretty coy. I mean, Huni is really squishy, right? You know, even if you are ahead and you could eventually poke down Darshan, there's true damage in this feast and he could just get bursted. In prison, silence, knockup is going to be flashed away from and now Huni puts the ulti down and tries to cut away. Which way is they going to go? Gets rid of one more time. That's going to be the burst coming through. The Tromp comes in 2v1, a quick pick up there. Echo Fox now angry looking for the play somewhere else, but not going to find it. The shutdown and yeah. another V-Stack. Oh, the ulti on the Biofrost, and it is going to be enough damage. Found himself alone inside the jungle, and now comes the TP flank. 4v4 on the map to Monte. We're running out of health, gets put down. Another kill comes through for Huhi, and Smoothie fail on the blast combo, has a teammate to jump to. It's going to be more of a chase, though. dardox has got to keep running. 4 v behind them. On the map, Darshan has the crowd control. Rain over. Blast cone. So now it's done. This could be an ace, depending on how this one comes down here. They're cutting back. Look at the play back in. They pop land for spite. And now for the turnaround, the root can come through. Will there be good kills in this one? Unstoppable is who he is. They knocked down the third straight kill. Knocked will not land. Dardock and lost on the run. Flashing for an arrow is a bit aggressive for Stixay. Getting a bit of damage, but not much else. Yeah, maybe hoping that that knockup was going to land. Either way, Rift was dropped in the midst of this mid lane. They're starting up the Baron. TP coming in over that. Rift Herald will knock down that mid lane turret. They got the kills. They're on the Baron. So the action is not yet done. Equalizer soon for Huni, and he should be able to kind of participate in this fight. Biofrost getting a bit low. Who he running a bit low on HP. This Rise of Giant Shield comes out, though. Biofrost running out of HP. They will drop him down, and they'll get the Rise as well. A double kill for Lost in the Zaya, and a stopwatch for Huni. Keeps himself alive for Quite a while, lost slinking away at 12 health. Watch out for the minion wave. He's gonna life steal up. He's gonna stay alive right there. As Harold falls down, the Baron play does not work. It backfires to two deaths. And it could actually just be turned around because potentially Echo Fox can just start this up if they wanted to. Now there's multiple members knocked down. Doesn't look like they're gonna decide to go for it though as Lost is heading back to base, but they oh, do hang on. Around. He could TP in if they want to try to go for this Baron. They're also on the wards trying to invade on the CLG. And he's gonna face check. He has Equalizer. He's gonna pull that one down, but very far away from Cho'Gath as Darshan can chase up. Not gonna find the knockup, but he is still a bit alone now as the stun's gonna keep coming through. And loss is durable. And you get a knockback, but there's no follow through. A bit disjointed is this fight as they come back in one more time, but they're going back and forth, undecided on who to go for, and they will still not get that kill. They committed Darshan was dead, but half the team ran away. Yeah, Lost actually kind of backing off there. They did get split up, but Lost TP'd in for this. So they wanted to try to posture aggressively. They don't decide to start the Baron. They do decide to try to go for this fight instead. Not being rewarded with those kills. Close fights back and forth here. In this game, the gold's still exceptionally tight, and you can see a lot of big item completions are starting to come through. Loss is already on two items, working towards his third item, IE, which is going to be really big for trying to actually punch through Darshan in that front line. And you know, Demonte working towards a Void Staff there uh, is also going to be pretty impactful in, in actually getting enough burst down for him. We take stock of the game once again as the items are sticking up. 6A scaling less hard now. Stop over Hex Drinker. Means it's less burst overall, despite the fact that armor still not yet coming in. Uh, Huni, as you had mentioned back earlier, and is finally going towards that Zonia's Hourglass. That's pretty close to done. Darshan grabs the Ocean Drake, so a bit more picked up for CLG. Actually, pretty big for Darshan that he's been able to pick up, you know, two objective feasts as well as a kill feast now. So he's on nine stacks, and that's starting to get, you know, into that danger zone where if you actually complete the stone plate, you can get close to those almost one-shot style feasts. So. Uh, they are going to have to be very wary of Darshan, who's already at about 4,000 health, 26 minutes in, doesn't even have his War Mogs or anything. Like, he's going to hit some massive health numbers. Yeah, he's already at 167 magic resist. He is good against the Syndra, this Gragas, and this Rumble. Blue Trigger used by CLG. They have lost River Control right now. It's Echo Fox sitting on a nice 1,000 gold could be lead. on the Baron for all they yeah. know. Playing the river, playing the brush. CLG unwilling to face check. going to be found out instead. And here comes Equalizer. Pretty good damage coming across. And it's going to be a quick realm warp over the wall. But that is now a missing cooldown as Darshan is right behind Echo Fox. Going to go for the engage. 
Team's too far away. Won't go for it just yet. Almost gets poked at by Huni. Definitely don't love the Equalizer as the form of Engage there. I mean, that is a rank 3 ultimate that is down. It is so huge for the Rumble to have. You know, unless you feel that that slow is going to be enough for Dardoch to then follow up and get the Engager smoothie to go for it, I don't think it's worth using, yeah. you know, in that manner. It has to be more as follow-up. Once Dardoch and Smoothie lock them down, then you layer it over and then you can finish someone off. Instead, Huni trying to kind of be that primary engage himself and does spend the ultimate. That spell can result in almost 2,000 damage per target to get the full five seconds on it. But yeah, in this case, burns it, gets a slow, and CLG healthy enough to just walk away. A big wave in the bot lane, and Huhi trying to decide, am I safe enough to attack this? Well, that minions deal damage. So far, no one's here. But he can walk out for a single auto and knock this turret down. Most of the gold is in local. Or I should say half of it's in local, and it will drop just two minions. So 250 gold left on the table, but he can go in for Huni. Lands a Q. Gonna clear the wave instead. Yep. We'll just shove that right back in. Again, doesn't know where the rest of the squad is. How do you know that it was a pure 1v1? He may have tried to play that a little bit more aggressively. Instead, we'll just back off. And again, Lost getting that much closer to that item. That's going to be a huge completion for him. A lot of big completions have been coming through for Echo Fox. They're certainly getting a lot stronger. You have double Void Staff now. And, uh, they are going to have a lot of damage threat, but as you pointed out, Darkron has a tremendous amount of magic resistance. Rain over and 6A are going to be consistent damage threats. And Huey's at a very strong point as well, closing in on four items and five, one, and five. Yeah, the next big thing for him is going to be Void Staff. That'll be a good power spike, letting him actually push through some of the slightly tankier members who have picked up Magic Resist. Merc Treads and several members, for example. Power Spike's coming in fairly soon. Lost actually close to Infinity Edge here as well and waiting for the play. Huni over the wall. He's in fog. If he walks in too far, Equalizer into the face could be very painful. Got back in the front lines. Lost feeling pretty comfortable with his ultimate available. Huhi just over the wall here, sitting in control water brush as well. Now spots Huni. And uh, the ult's coming across, but not going to land there for the uh, Varus. And now the engage comes through. Equalizer across the top. They've knocked down right over right away. Darshan, he's running out of health, flashing away, trying to stay alive. But the shots will come through a double kill yet again for Lost. 4 3 and 3 on this Zaya. Another team fight win for Echo Fox. There's that playmaking smoothie. Finds the engage. They burst down rain over before the ultimate can come out. And they are straight onto the Baron. It should be theirs. No smite. No feast for CLG to contest, and Demonte still has his ultimate. Jardox still has his. CLG are going to try to contest, but they can just the get Q. turned off. Ooh, can he burn it down? It's not going to be enough. The spite, the auto attack comes in, and Echo Fox with two kills plus the Baron, and a clean reset. Yeah, very well played there from Echo Fox. Barfrost tried to start something out here, but the taunt, unfortunately, looked like it missed onto Dardoch, and Smoothie is able to go right back in afterwards. So Biofrost going forward. The ultimate from 6A misses. The taunt from Biofrost misses. And then Smoothie shows up. The Equalizer layered over there onto Rainover. He gets burst down before he can get the ultimate off. And Darshan not actually using the Beast there onto Smoothie. Perhaps could have traded back a kill, but hard to react in time. It was just focused on trying to get out and survive. Infinity Edge completed. Next power spike in for Lost. He did not have the item during the team fight, so he's even scarier mm. now. Who he again trying to find a side lane piece of the pie, but down a level equal in farm. He has not managed to get himself ahead of Huni. And just clears the wave in his face. Nothing happens. Mid lane, of course, under siege for the rest of the four. Echo Fox pushing back CLG. Mid lane tier two is gone. A two turret lead for Echo Fox. The gold lead at 3,000. Looking now at the middle inhibitor turret, but and so far wave clear. The engage potential is certainly still there from Echo Fox. Smoothie and Dardoch have their ultimates back now. Smoothie did not even spend his flash in the last fight, so one misstep from CLG, and this game can very easily end. They have so much damage, and when they nail those engages, CLG is just going to blow up. Putting across the map a 1-4 as Huni's in the top lane, pushing in Darshan. Several levels up him. 15 versus 18. Massively better split pushing. A 60 farm lead on that side of the map as well. In a game that was otherwise so close. A lot of that lead just in that top lane. 3,000 is the top lane advantage. That's the entire team advantage. Huni, a more aggressive, more successful mid game than Darshan. Yeah, I'm working towards that death cap, which is going to be absolutely enormous. Uh, when you are on that rank 3 ultimate with death caps, you're just going to shred through them. But. 6A doing his best, trying to land poke, and he does have Lost fairly low. And that's one of the best ways that they can try to make them back off, is actually poking their members out, trying to get them low, trying to dissuade them for looking for any sort of dive. And Darshan back to base, has the Stone Plate, so he's level 16, has the Stone Plate Feast available. Could look for some sort of burst. 
I'm in a big chunk in the short right now. Down goes top lane inhibitor turret. And the siege with all five of them in as the inhibit's gonna fall as well. Giving up control. Still gonna play farther and farther back. Stick say equalizer onto him. Looking for the hard engage. They look for the kindred. They may burn him down again before Lamb just fight and keep Rain over alive. Turret's gonna fall pretty soon, but first the chunk comes through and Dardak will drop. A 4v4 still under the turret. They've gotta respect this big damage on Huhi, but Huhi stays alive. 4v4 still as they push in as the turret falls. The inhibitor itself is going to drop with the minion wave inside the base, but it's gonna be Echo Fox backing up. 45 seconds up there, and they're gonna reset and go towards the Ocean Drake first. Yeah, still G gets a trade of kills, but Echo Fox coming out way on top. Two inhibitors down. We'll be able to pick up another dragon on their way out, and Echo Fox just on point with these engages onto Rainover. This is through Sandy United, and that was, you know, the Hex Trigger Shield. You can see the Shen ultimate goes out, so that's Sandy United, but they just absolutely exploded. Everyone flashing in on top of this guy, making sure they kill him before the Kindred ultimate can come out. And from there, it's so tough to win this fight. Really nice use of the Seraphs from who he survives the ultimate from Demonte as he flashed in for that kill. But they lose the inhibitors, and Echo Fox certainly getting that much closer to closing this one out. Yeah, and this is almost certainly in their reach. And almost a formality as we get farther into this one. The lead's still not exactly massive, right? It's only that 3,500. Theoretically, CLG can keep up, but. I don't see how Lethality Varus, I think, keeps up in a game like this, though, when there's just more damage for everyone else in Echo Fox. Yeah, and I'm not too sure about the Lord Dominic's this game. It doesn't feel like there's really, you know, that much. So it's actually still very good just in general because of uh, when it got reworked with all the marksman updates. It's even good against Squishies. I think it's actually, it's more like how Void Staff is good on every mage. I think Lord Dominic's is good on every physical okay. damage dealer. Uh, in, in general, uh, yes, it's still better against tanks, but I think it's still good just as a basic caster item. Either way. Six eight goal is still the same. Poke them out. That is really your only hope. You have to land on some poke, but they have an ocean as well. And Hui and Darshan trying to catch Huni here. Gonna go in to for it. it. Right, but he's gonna be rooted at flashing over the walls. A nice play. Flash for Rome Warp. At least Huni stays alive, but watch out for the bottom lane. This is a four versus three, and how good is your defense with only a Shen to be the tank? Good poke towards Lost. You can see the damage output's quite nice, but Lost has some lifesteal. I believe it's both from runes and as well as the Vamp Scepter. Kind of yeah. sustains back up all the damage now, ready to go for this inhibitor turret. Baron is done, but here's the TP. CLG basically have to engage now, or they're just going to lose their third hit, but they're straight on to Rainover. Quick land this fight, Rainover stays alive, but how's the re-engage going to look? The Z-Plaza comes across to get away from the blade color, but the turret's going to be dropping down. Two inhibs already gone, looking at number three. CLG might just be seeding this one as well. Two minutes left on Baron till it respawns. Death cap done as you talked about earlier on this rumble, but the ult mostly missed. I feel like if you give up this inhibitor, the game is done, so they need to try to fight for it. They're sending Huhi to wave clear, and the rest of them are trying to stay around. Nice job of keeping Echo Fox off the building so far, but nothing really stops them from walking forward. Other than the threat of an engage, Darshan and Huhi, who the big heavy lifters here who can walk up and survive a Syndra. Yeah, the poke from 6 is just not doing enough, and they're not able to push them back fast enough, so... Huhi again, trying to go back to wave clear. He is doing a good job of that. And very strong on this rise right now. And CLG trying to navigate this, this tough situation as best as they possibly can. They know they need to defend this triple inhib. Couple of autos once in a while. Then a half HP is the inhibitor. Waves once in a while, flooding in from mid and top. The flash for a great zone is by Damonte. Stays alive against Shogun. Did not have time too early. He's gonna be able to walk away. That could have been a kill, but it is not to be. But look at the re-engage. Low health bars on Echo Fox. But meanwhile, CLG running out of those right now as Shogun is down. Lost is dominating, and who he's gotta run back towards his Nexus turrets. The roots coming through, but the inhibitor is gone. Triple inhib now as Echo Fox complete their 4,000 gold Baron power play and look to knock down the game and stay on the map at a five versus four. 40 seconds on Darshan's respawn. Echo Fox looking to do what they did in Spring Split, make it all the way to at least the top four. And this could be their way forward. A quick talk got to come through, but no kills to be had. Demonte and the rest of the team able to walk away cleanly. Cleanse popped by Smoothie. Hook's gonna land though. Nice shot as Stixay does get himself a trade kill. Smoothie goes down 13 to 12. CLG will stay alive. Yeah, they get the QSS from Lost. They do get one kill there, and we'll see how quickly those inhibitors are gonna respawn. But Echo Fox certainly very happy with the push. The CLG base is in shambles, and CLG knows Baron is coming up. They're gonna have to get out on the map now to try to contest this, but there's gonna be so many minions crashing in, and Echo Fox have the vision advantage, have all the options on the table here. They could just look to turn. TP is coming in. This he takes that. It's so risky. A close touch. The stun not going to land. Demonte doesn't find him. Another run in. Oh, they blow him up. 5v4. And his zone is popped by Huhi. Can this be the turnaround? A lot of burst in. They have knocked down. Huhi's alive. Is gone. And yes, Huhi. Huhi.
Hoonie staying alive, and Hoonie forced to run at 5 HP. The snipe comes through! 3 for 0, CLG on the Baron! CLG with the incredible blade there. The well warp comes through from Hoonie. The scatter of the week missed, and they're on to the Baron. They get three kills, and CLG are back into the game. You can see the frustration there on Darlock's face. So unhappy with this turn of events. Echo Fox thought they had the jump on him not expecting this Realm Warp whatsoever, and then they see it's coming through. Scatter the Week comes out. It does not actually hit anyone. Hui just flashes forward, gets the kill, buys time with the Zonias. Everyone coming through, and Hui even gets out there and then sticks a. So much patience on this Piercing Arrow, waiting it out until Huni gets against the wall, knows he's guaranteed to get it, and CLG, two inhibitors have respawned. Yeah. They are now tied in gold, essentially, here. And they have really just flipped this game on its head. Massive, massive play out of Huhi right there. Game saving. But now can they keep map control? Of course, Baron buff on five is going to be good for that. Darshan gets away a scuttle. Drake's up. Elder Dragon, sorry, in 45 seconds. That'll be during the Baron buff. I mean, Huhi is trying so hard to carry this game. Six, one, and eight on the rise. Has been doing very, very well. He's trying to be proactive. He's trying to get out on the map, and he is a mage-eyes. Yeah, he's big. But now a knock-up on Dardoch pops his hourglass, and a huge engage for Smoothie. But not quite any kills. Deklux, though, big damage to Darshan. That Shogun's out of HP. The knock back in. They've knocked him down. The Majai's is gone. Who he is dead. And down the mid they go. Echo Fox 5v4 and missing a rise to stop them. Yeah, their strongest member is now down. It's up to Stix A. It's up to Rain Over. They have to play these fights perfectly because Gragas has Flash, Body Slam. He can look for the engage. And CLG looks like they're making the call to just give up the inhibs and try to fight from down on the map again. I don't see how you defend with your most fed member dead without turrets behind you. They give that up. They give the map control out. Keep in mind, though, Baron Buff still on the four of them for a minute and a half. And yeah. Echo Fox tie the gold once again. They knock Huhi off the map. They knock out a bunch of stacks of Magi's, but still have the work cut out for them. And it's about the Elder now. You can see Stixie's teeping in, but this is a dangerous spot for him. He is ahead of the team, but he's just he's just looking for it. Bit of that was, that was that. ballsy. He's running towards the Gragas with yeah. the, gar the Ghost Blade popped and the Home Guards. And they're just straight onto the Baron here. Who he can't join. It's a Down 5v4. Elder. No TP from cooldown. Who he can run. He can Realm Warp. But CLG must kite this out. They kind of leash the Elder. Can Darshan get over the wall to feast? He has the flash. Here's the knock up in the back line right over. Pushed back, but barely staying inside the respite. And the double kill could come through pretty rapidly. Equalizer are going to miss, though. But a double he's kill anyway. Animal. Feast comes in, and Darshan grabs it. But he's not going to survive this. The Realm Warp will just not quite grab him as three kills come through, and the minions are inside the base. Two versus the world. I don't see CLG defending this. Yeah, there's just so many supers there. Six A and Huhi trying to fight them outside of the base. They're looking for Darnock. Trying to find one kill to get that, but knock into the air. They'll find this one after the stopwatch. It shouldn't matter at all. The flame spitter in there to knock them down. Winions will close it out. Echo Fox closing on second. CLG make it close, but Echo Fox get another win here. And what a game that was. So exciting. Down to the wire. Some heroics from CLG making it close, but. Echo Fox winning out in that final fight. It was the 5v4, despite the fact that the Elder goes over. Yeah. It doesn't matter. What a group of fights towards the end there. What an ending. A 12-kill game for Lost. Top the damage charts on his teams. Only about 2% less damage than the poke Varus put out throughout the game. He has been massive in team fights in a very contentious game, under siege in the lane. 12 and 3. I mean, this guy is playing like such a monster for the team. Really, really good stuff from him. And honestly, a pretty impressive game from Echo Fox. You know, they drafted themselves into this team comp that was going to be pretty tough to pull off. And you can see Enero, the former coach, celebrating with the team. Rick Fox there, yeah. giving some high fives as well. And Smoothie and Dardock were on point with the engages. Lost was always there with the follow up. And uh, Echo Fox. Two and one now, you know, with this new roster coming mm -hmm. through. It's looking good. It is looking good. So victory for them. Of course, lost with plenty of experience in the OPL. Certainly not a rookie. 
but still a great player. His debut in North America has so far been pretty solid. And off his comfort pick of Varus, still a very good game. So now, for more on that win, let's send it down for an interview with the Echo Fox bot lane. Thanks, guys. Lost, congratulations on picking up your second win with the team. How are you fitting in? Um, I'm still taking a, a, a little bit to like get back up to scrap with all the LCOS players because for the most part, I've been playing with the Academy squad. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to catch up as fast as I can. And who on the team has been offering you the most support to work towards your growth? Um, it would definitely be Andy or Smoothie. He's been, you know, he's, he's been kind of like my big brother figure so far. He's just been like teaching me like the ropes and whatnot. And I'm really, really steadily improving as a player playing with Andy, and I'm really glad I have him. And your skills are going to be tested tomorrow. You're taking on TSM. Are you ready to take on Zven? Uh, hopefully I don't grief like I did today. So yeah, hopefully tomorrow will be a lot cleaner. Uh, I think I played hella bad today. So yeah, hopefully I'm not a dead weight tomorrow. You picked up a quad at the end, though. You still picked up some plays. But congratulations again on your victory. And for more in the game, let's hear it from the State Farm Analyst Desk. <laughs> Thank you very much, Avli. First off, we've got to welcome Ole to the desk. He's going to help us break this one down. A crazy one, to say the least. Echo Fox victorious over CLG. Not surprised with these two teams in the game that the early minutes were Ooh. hectic and skirmishy. However, CLG came out on top, Ole, and it was in large part due to Biofrost and his presence on the map. I want to dive into, you know, that Shen pick, how he played it, and why they were able to find all these advantages. I, I think uh, you, now Verus is really strong pick, so like Verus just push along, and then Jaraka has no idea where is Shen. But I think Jaraka has to call like where like Shen is Mia, Shen is Mia. But like they didn't call it. Even there is no Mia ping. So like Shen just show up, and the Dardoch was like, what? What is that? And then I died. Yeah, and only the crazy thing we we're talking about here is how is Biofrost always in these positions? against a Zyra Khan, because if you're in the shoes of Zyra Khan, what are you doing when Varus is sitting alone in lane? I think, like, I'm gonna just, like, walk up forward, and then, like, Varus cannot even farm. But, like, they didn't really punish Varus, so that, like, even now, like, they he got level 6, and then, like, Jerry just died, so, like, bull was over, and the mid jungle was over by Biofrost. Right, even returning to the lane, picking up a kill, a lot of advantages built for that bot lane off of the roams that Biofrost was able to pull off. You see there, the proximity of the duos itself just kind of illustrates how much time Biofrost was allowed to be away from Stixay. Yeah, and I think that's an incredible stat for Biofrost, who's really stepped up for this team. It was also interesting because this was one of the first, I would say, uh, bad early games for Rainover, where usually he's the guy ahead and controlling the tempo of the game. He got picked off by Huni at his Wolves and then killed again. So it was 0-2 and 1, I think, which uh, made it kind of difficult for him to play because I feel like he's so used to getting ahead in the game. And uh, it felt like maybe the shot calling started to fall apart afterwards. A little bit of an advantage for CLG coming out of the early game. But again, the skirmishes continued all the way forward to 29 minutes, where we end up with a 2 for 0 oh in favor of CLG and then to the Baron. Or, in, sorry, in favor of Echo Fox. Yeah, and this was another situation where you, you are wondering, like, from the team competition perspective, why isn't the Rise split pushing in some way? Because if Echo Fox is able to get the right initiation with the Rakan, they did this a couple of times, actually. CC locking Rain over before he could even get his Kindred ultimate off because they're fighting without that much vision in a group situation. Uh, so, Jack kind of touched on it there, the idea that perhaps there was another strategy CLG could have employed to continue pushing their advantage forward. Ole, what do you think, or what would you have been asking your team to do in the situation that CLG was at, maybe 25 minutes into the game? Uh, I think, like, if I'm CLG side, like, we have Rise and Shen. So, like, hey, we have double TP, and then we have Shen ult. So, okay, Rise just, uh, like, we're gonna 1 3 1, split push, they cannot answer Rise. And maybe what, what they can do is like only Baron. So we have Cho'Gas, we got TP back, and we got Steer, and game is over. But like, even though like they miss uh, some ulti mid side, like that doesn't matter because that's, even though they hit, they're gonna lose team fight. The enemy have Lumber and Jaraka, like how can you dare to fight? And Mark, this seems to be a, like a continuing issue for CLG. These, these fantastic early games, and you already pinpointed the idea that typically rain over is the catalyst for the strong early game, this time Biofrost. But there's there's a there's a disconnect or there's a breakdown somewhere in that mid game for this team over and over and over. Yeah, I mean going back to Spring Split, when Darshan was receiving a lot of the team's resources, he would play split pushers, they would get ahead, and then they would group and try and team fight with the split pusher. Here again, who he is 
massive and no one's going to be able to stop him. And not only that, but you had so many tools to collapse if they ever did try and stop him. You had TP on two other members as well as having a Shenel. So you could collapse f three more people to him if they ever tried to get to him and they just never actually went for that setup really. And for the side of Echo Fox chat, seeing as how they did come away with the mm -hmm. victory, one of the things that Smoothie had said in his first week with the team is that they're always looking for the fight. And he feels like his responsibility <laughs> here is to, is to come in and kind of <laughs> teach them a little bit about the macro game and yet they're still winning these games, it seems, by fights. It always comes down to the fights for Echo Fox. Yeah, realistic change doesn't happen overnight uh, is one thing. Lost with 12 kills, even though in the interview he said he wasn't doing well, has the m ties for the most kills in a single game this split. Uh, and that's just because Echo Fox was fighting all the time. Uh, this fight in particular was where they could have backed for the reset, but they decided to stay in a brush. CLG caught them on the, on the bluff, and this very well could have actually been a turning port where CLG not only turns around the game, but turns around their season because they were sitting at seven losses before the game, and now they're sitting at eight, and they get the Baron off of this. But you know how you get yourself out of a hole from fighting? Just keep on just fighting. Just fight again, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's what you could do. I don't know. You could always just not be here. Keep fighting. <laughs> you could not rumble alt the 3K HP Infernal Drake. Uh, that would be something I wouldn't do either. Oh, so it gets low enough for Cho'Gath to, Cho to feast it. Yeah, there's a lot of things I, I think I would not do from these last two replays if you, you made me do it. But here, they got the kill before the Realm Warp. Oh, oh, hey, it's all good. We were freaking out watching this series of events. Look at that deck. gold graph. That's not a good gold graph. Not the way you want to come away with the victory I mean, in the last the, that's five minutes of the game. That's an entertaining game. game. Well, that's do you true, like yeah. roller coasters? Uh, I don't like it. I thought it was going to be something to me. But I think this, I, this time, like Echo Fox has to fight, and then CRJ has to uh, avoid fight, and then always wants to one. I think Echo Fox did right thing. Like yeah. they have to always fight. Right. In this case, the right decision for them to group up and force those fights, perhaps some criticism thrown CLG's way for not recognizing that they had other options available to them if they were looking for that victory. Uh, and, Jack, we, we earlier today we were talking about the struggles of, of the old guard, CLG, TSM, Cloud9. This is a team with an astounding number of Ooh. veterans on their roster. This is a team that, you know, when we talk about identifying win conditions, veterans are usually the ones we point to as being the people that can yeah. establish and have that conversation mid-game of how do we win a game, and yet it's not happening for CLG. Yeah, and Ole and I had a conversation about this during the game. I'd like to hear your thoughts after this, but I feel like CLG has very good 15-minute plans, but then they're not good at identifying what they actually have to do between 15 and 30. This is this particular game where they weren't 1-3-1-ing the way they should have. And their vision control was actually very poor. And this has been the case the entire year. So I don't necessarily see a light at the end of the tunnel. Oli, what do you think is the problem with CLG? Oh, I think like they have always like kind of same strategy. Like even though you have to do 1-3-1, they believe just like group up together and then do team fight. That's maybe that's best option to them. But like I, I think they have to make more strategy. Like we're gonna just keep going one three one. Like some game, like even one team was losing a lot, and then they just like keep going side lane, and the enemy has no idea what to do. And then, like they turn the table a lot. Mm -hmm. But like CRG, just like oh, I think maybe we we're gonna win five v five. Maybe just do some crazy mech like play. Maybe and then like they just go and then oh, enemy has rumble. We die. Game is over. Uh, Ole, I also want to pick your brain a little bit about Echo Fox here as well because uh, again, this is a team that now has a fair number of stars on the roster. You already had Huni and Dardock. They make a big pickup like Smoothie um, <laughs> with just this young AD carry and loss who very clearly has a growth mindset. W what do you think is their biggest strength as a team? Why why would any team fear playing Echo Fox? Oh, uh, when I play against them, like I don't know what's gonna happen. Like. <laughs> Maybe one day they're gonna play really macro game. One day they just wanna fight. Like we have no idea. But when we when I play against like one day saves like CRG, C9, like we know what enemy wanna do. Like Echo Fox, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> just just do it. All right, good. I'm glad to know that it's not just us who never knows what Echo yeah. Fox is going to do. Ole, thank you so much for joining us for this segment. After the break, two teams on the rise, Optic and FlyQuest duke it out for game four. You're watching North American LCS. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh.
looking for the damage. That's a flash force, but now the flash taunt. The cleanse, but the damage is still going to be there. First blood of the mid lane. They could look for a play. Well, it's going to land. He doesn't even oh, flash dead. the max range and loss. I, I have Zanya. I'm going to flash. I'm going to flash up. I'm going to flash up. Zion, no flash. Zion, kill Zion, kill Zion. Nice, okay. nice. Shit, they have no flash here. They have no flash here. Both of flash. 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 Okay, nice. Nice. They oh, love nice. it. Yes. They love it. Now the engage comes through. He's going to across the top and they've knocked down right over right away. Darshan, he's going to get a health. Flash going, trying to stay alive with the shot. Will come through a double kill yet again for Lop. I got him. Yo, I, I, I have ulti. I'm going to ulti you. Yo, Baron, Wait, just Baron. do the Baron. Just do the, the Baron. Baron. Do the Baron. Do the Baron. We need the base. I got, I got Rumble. Okay, okay. Okay. Do the Baron. Do the Baron. Do the Baron. Anyways, Beast comes in and Darshan grabs it, but he's not going to survive this. The Rumble will just not quite grab him. Williams will close it out. Go Fox closing on second. Welcome to Level Up, presented by State Farm. With Kindred back in the meta, we want to make sure you know how to use and wolf down those passive marks. At zero stacks, Kindred has an auto attack range of 500, the same as Lucian. At four stacks, Lamb and Wolf unlock a bonus 75 range. This puts Kindred on par with Varus. Pick up early marks found on easier to execute camps both in the jungle and in lane. And you could, theoretically, outrange any marksman in the game.